All right, for our next project, we're going to go to vector design. We just finished our GIF animations. We'll have our group presentation soon. But this is the new skill we're going to start learning. We were introduced to vector shapes with exercise two, and we use vector shape tools within Photoshop. Right? Here we're going to actually create vector shapes with a vector program using Adobe Illustrator. What are vectors good for? They can scale infinitely from the same file. So they're very efficient for memory. So logos, and I loved these. These were uh, like designer modified logos for the pandemic. So that the Corona beer logo needed a new name. The Olympics that went on during the pandemic, they needed to separate those, <laughs> those rings. Uh, instead of LinkedIn, it was locked in. And MasterCard, they had to socially distance as well. Right? Why I use those is because these logos are recognizable and they are not complicated. Right? So, but when you tweak them just a little bit, they become very different. So like the spacing of the Olympic rings, when you're dealing with something as simple as just flat cut out shapes, the shapes need to be really clean, the spacing needs to be really exact. All of that has to do with kind of the, the exacting approach to logo design that a vector program like Illustrator allows you to do. So we have a few things in this module because we're moving from, from compositing and raster imaging, pixel based imaging to vector, we have a question of the day for that. It's a good thing to, to look at. It's not due until next week um, in order to inform a class discussion, but it's a good thing to look at. We'll move through it. And then we'll look at the assignment I'm introducing today. And in order to sketch for that assignment, you're actually going to do a full proving ground in your types of sketching because you really want to think it through before you start playing with vectors. So this is the question of the day. What advantages does vector-based imagery have over raster-based imagery? What are its disadvantages? When would using a vector-based image be more effective than a pixel-based image? So just basically applying the knowledge, when would you choose to make something as a vector? When would you choose to make something pixel-based? And I have a nice group of Google Slides here that uses a bunch of different resources, some created by digital honors students, like this video that explains the difference, and then lots of ways of exploring it. Now, this is the part of the slides that we're going to actually focus on today, the different types of logos that are out there, because you're going to be designing your own logo. And for this semester, you're going to be designing your own version. It needs to be a fairly straightforward, scalable, black shape image that is a vector that is your version of our campus mascot, which is Nico the Nighthawk. So if you look up Northeast Lakeview and then Nico and look up images, you will see our mascot, right? And you will see the official vector image, though it's not a vector here because to be online it has to be rasterized, but it's made from a vector. And so this is like the official branded, branded mascot. Sometimes it's just the head, sometimes it's the full body, sometimes that body is in different poses. This is the actual costume. And that works well for the institution. What we want to do is to personalize it. So I call it a logo mashup. Because when we do our own versions of things, we can make them a lot stronger and make them kind of more meaningful. You don't even need to keep the same colors or the same themes. So you're going to do some research. If we look up like Nighthawk logos, you'll get a lot of sports teams. But what's different about Nico the Nighthawk, which is pretty unique, is it has that little pun to it. He has a knight's helmet. Actually, I don't know the gender of Nico. So they have a knight's helmet. Right. But you might decide, I don't want to do that knight's helmet thing. Maybe I want to showcase that in a different way. Or maybe what Nico the Nighthawk means to me is a whole lot of college debt. 
So you want to merge the Nighthawk with like a money symbol or some other iconic imagery, right? We did, we did a project after the, uh, the Gulf pipeline incident, you know, when it was spewing oil, where we took oil company logos and we modified them. And I don't know if those are still things like that are online. But this would be what I mean by a mashup. So we would do things like we would take shell and we would drip it with oil or we'd take BP and put it on the end of a flower that's that's dying from like poisoned soil, things like that. So it's the reason we do it this way is because we're being introduced to vectors. It's important to start looking at vectors and start seeing how they're used in the society. So there are three approaches. This is my take on it and what you need to know for the final. There are three main design approaches that are usually used towards three different types of logos. So the first type of logo is called pictorial. It can also be called iconic. So a pictorial or iconic logo is just the image. And that's kind of the gold standard for most companies. Starbucks did not start with this logo, right? But they ended up here <laughs> where they could get rid of all type. And that just happened within the last decade. <laughs> now, logo types, Coca-Cola is maybe the most famous logo type on the planet. Logo types are the exact same kind of thing. They need to be iconic. They need to really show you with the image what the company is about or what the idea is about. But they do it through letter forms, letter forms that are highly stylized and customized. So Subway. Coca-Cola, USA Network, Google, Disney, HBO. There is no iconic logo that helps you know these things, right? Instead, you need the letter forms. And so when the letter forms are essential to the logo, that is a logo type. Another term for logo type, just like you have pictorial logos that are also iconic logos, another term for logo type is a word mark. And so graphic designers will sometimes use that because you're making your, your image mark with a word. And then the third type is called a combined mark. And a combined mark combines both the iconic logo with a logo type. So Adidas is a really good example of this. But and Nike is actually a really good example of this. When I was growing up in the 80s, you usually saw them together. But then in the 90s, they started separating it out. So you had campaigns that only used the logo type of Nike, and you had campaigns that only used the swoosh, right? This is Starbucks progression, right? Started as a combined mark, became a more refined combined mark, and now it's just a, an iconic or pictorial logo. It's all sinking in. What you are not going to do for this assignment is you are not going to do a logo type or a combined mark. <laughs> Because we're going to be using vectors, once we get some practice at it, to design type. But we'll be doing that in a later assignment. So what you are making is a pictorial logo. Your image needs to showcase it. You are not going to use text yet. And the only uh, exception I make to that is if you want to hide letters into the image. So if you'll notice on Nico the Nighthawk, There is actually an N hidden in the, the crest of the helmet. And it's designed so that it's a lowercase N this way. And if it's flipped, it's actually a capital, a uppercase N. So there's little things. Sometimes you can hide hints at word marks within pictorial logos. Go Northeast Lakeview Volleyball. All right. And we're going to go back to those slides. So this is what our project looks like. Once you have a refined sketch, which you'll get to through doing proving ground number two, you are then going to make a black shape vector based on that sketch. And then you are going to make a color version of that black shape vector. They should both work. 
This is one of the reasons we do this project, so you understand the versatility of logos. So Nico, I don't know why I keep closing that. I want the logo. It's actually, it's a mascot, not a logo. It's a graphic image, not a logo, because mascot images can change with time and with purpose. Like the volleyball one might have a different one than the basketball team one, but they use the same mascot. Uh, let's do it this way. Can I find the image? I had it. But what I was going to say is that this logo type or this graphic image of Nico that exists and I'll post it into the assignment. Frustrating. It's all just photos. I had it. Um, it relies on color. So if you want a Nico that doesn't rely on color, you have to think of it just as black shapes first. And then color can always be added in. Just like BP, just in black and white, you have to figure out what that would be. Or shell, just in black and white. How can that read? Right. So color is added to our black shape logo. And that gives us the most versatility. We're doing black. Actually, we're not even doing white. We're doing black shape. Right. We will have the option in our color version to do like grayscale versions, drop shadows, textures, all kinds of things. But first, we just want a cutout of a black shape, like it's a black vinyl sticker. We'll be learning how to build that in Illustrator. Okay. And then we'll be learning how to, to do color versions of it. You don't even need the refine sketch for class next time. You'll need the proving ground that will get you to the refine sketch. <laughs> yep. So here we see, so this is the assignment, not the proving ground. Once you have a sketch, black shape vector, then you can, you add color, some sort of color variation, even if it's very simple. Refine sketch, black shapes. Notice this logo is a little bit more illustrative. This is the one with, you know, oil companies I was telling you about. As long as they're black shape vectors, it can work. And that's why you might think of it, instead of a logo, you might think of it as a tattoo design, but it needs to be something that scales well and can work as just black shapes. Again, we have past examples, past student works, beyond these examples that you can look at. This one is pretty clever. They wanted to do an Earth Day logo. They had it written into the leaf, and it is there. It's just incredibly subtle. And it's a nice excuse for the leaf pattern. And then this was the color version. This is another Earth Day one, kind of the Earth under threat. It works really well in black and white. And then with color, this is a drama one. Now this is what we'll get into with the proving ground. You're going to be sketching your basic idea in three different ways. So this is a good aspect of how black shapes can be refined. And then you can add color to it. Notice there's no black in this color logo at all. Everything has been either changed to a different color or filled. But it needs to read as both. First is black and then with color. All right. Lots of examples. This is a fun project. And it's one that you're all going to be forced to print for your midterm. So you're going to print either your black one or your color one. But everyone's going to print their logo. So I want everyone to see the difference of a printed vector versus a printed raster file. This is actually a Nico the Nighthawk one that we did for Day of the Dead. <laughs> so. so for our proven ground sketch, is it, is it going to be pretty intricate and detailed? Uh, well, your sketches, we're only seeing refined sketches here. Oh, okay. So our proving ground sketch, let's go see that. You're going to do your own version of Nico, right? I'll do a different theme. But... This is the proving ground. You need to sketch it, and I recommend, honestly, just sketching this by hand. 
because you want to be as loose and do as many versions as possible.